Welcome to How To in ECS. This video will cover the Incident Report Charting Screen. To open the Incident Report Charting Screen, first select the resident's name from the name list. Then, select the button marked Incidents at the bottom of the third column on the nurse's main access screen. This will open the Incident Accidents access screen. Click the button marked Fall slash Incident at the top of the charting column. This will open the Incident Report charting screen. To begin, select one of the incident types listed. Then, enter in the resident's mental status at the time of the incident. Then, indicate the location of the resident at the time of the incident. Following the location is the description of events. At the beginning of description of events, you will select the resident's position, the activity at the time of the incident, and equipment involved in the incident. Then, click the button marked Description Narrative and enter in a description of what occurred and what was found at the time of the incident. Following the description of events, is the injury assessment. Here you will indicate if any injuries were, uh, were received at the time of the incident. If an injury was received, select the type of injury and then in the dialog box enter in a description of that injury. If no injuries were apparent at the time of the incident, click the button marked No Apparent Injury. Following the injury assessment is the are two questions. Did the resident hit their head? Indicate yes or no. And then, is the resident on an anticoagulant or antiplatelet? Here again, answer yes or no. Following these questions is the first aid section. Indicate if first aid was applied. If you click immediately applied, enter in, in the dialog box what first aid was provided. If transfer to the emergency room is indicated, select transfer to emergency room, and if no first aid was needed, select none note needed. Following first aid are possible causes. This is where you enter the resident statement. First click the button that says resident states and type in what the resident says happened at the time of the incident. If the resident is unable to communicate, you can skip the resident state section and enter in any other possible causes for the incident. After possible cause, select footwear. Then select who the first responder was to the incident. If there were any witnesses, so indicate whether it was a staff member, family member, or visitor you'll be prompted to enter in the name of the staff member, family member, or visitor, and if it is a staff member, you will be prompted to enter in the title. If there were no witnesses, click None. Following witnesses, you will then need to click the button marked Actions and enter in, in the dialog box what actions you took at the time of the incident. In the immediate interventions, you will collect the purple button and then in the dialog box enter in what interventions you put into place at the time of the incident. Future actions is for entering in any teaching you provided to the resident as well as any future interventions that will be put into place. Desired outcome when you click will open up a dialog box for you to enter in what the outcome is of the interventions to prevent further incidents. Then indicate the shift the incident occurred on, the day of the week, the date of the incident, and the time of the incident. Then indicate how the physician was notified, the date and time of the, of the notification, and then no indicate how the family was notified and the date and time the family member was notified. If you need to find the contact information for family members, you can click this tan button at the bottom of the family notification. This will open up the resident's contact information. After the family and physician notifications comes the initial neurocheck. 
To start the NeuroCheck, indicate the time and date the NeuroCheck was completed. Then enter in the pupil sizes, the pupil reactions, speech clarity, hand grasps, and residence movement of extremities. Then enter in the Glasgow Coma Scale scores for eye opening, verbal response, and best motor response. Then click the GCS score button to get your total Glasgow Coma Scale score. Finally, enter in the resident's vital signs at the time of the incident. To do this, start with the Time Obtained button and enter in the time the vitals were obtained. Then, click the button marked Blood Pressure and in the number pad, enter in the resident's blood pressure. Select the resident's pulse, whether apical or radial, and in the number pad, enter in what the pulse was. For temperature, select the route the temperature was taken, and then in the number box, enter in what the temperature was. Then, click respiratory rate, and in that number box, enter in what the resident's respiratory rate was at the time of the incident. Finally, click the save slash send witness statement button. This will cause two user selection screens to appear. The first user selection screen will be to select staff members' names who will then need to fill out the witness statement. You can select more than one staff member by holding down the control button while selecting the, the staff members' names. Then click OK. A second user selection screen will appear. This will be to select the supervisor's name who will then fill out the incident conclusion. After selecting the supervisor's name, click OK and those alarms will be sent. Your incident report will then be saved and a copy of the report will display on the screen. A copy of this report will also be sent the, to the DON, the supervisors, the ADONs, and the administrator. <clears throat> if the incident is for a fall or an injury, you will need to fill out a pain assessment. When filling out the pain assessment, you will answer the questions under the pain management part of the assessment and move to your right answering as many questions as you can. Information such as whether the resident has been on a scheduled pain medicine may appear down at the bottom when the EMRs are actually loaded. As you proceed through, you will find certain things like verbal assessment. If the resident is unable to verbally give you answers to the location of pain or description, you may skip this section. Following the verbal assessment will be for nonverbal responses or whether the resident is unwilling. Here again, answer each question to the best of your ability moving to the right. Once all questions have been answered, you can click the comments button to add in any additional information and then you can click the pink save button. If the incident is a fall, you also need to do the fall risk assessment. When filling out the fall risk assessment, answer what questions you can. If you do know prior to admission or if that does not apply, you may skip it. Enter in any predictive factors for the fall risk, the mobility of the resident, gait and balance, vision status, if you know their orthostatic blood pressures, if they've had any past falls in the past three months, if they are on any medications listed, have they had any med dose changes, <clears throat> do they have any predisposition? predisposing diseases. Here again, answer all questions that you can and then click the button say in total score. This will give the resident's risk score. After all this has been entered, click the pink save button and you are finished with the fall risk assessment. 
For all injury incidents, you will also need to see the skin charting video to enter in the skin charting. If the incident happens to be an elopement, you will need to fill out the elopement assessment. The elopement assessment is listed with the other assessments on the nurse charting screen. To fill out the elopement assessment, answer each question working from left to right, and then click the pink save button at the end of the screen. Thank you.